Here we have a parallelogram ABCD and a circle that goes through the vertices B, C, and D and intersects side AB at point E and side AD at point F. We know the lengths of AF, which is 7, we know BE, which is 10, and we know the angle C, which is arctangent of square root of 15. We are asked to find the area of the parallelogram and the radius of a circle. Before we go ahead and solve this problem, let's first think what kind of tools we likely need to solve this problem. So first of all, we see that the angle is given as arctangent. So probably we need to know what arctangent is. Or more generally, we need to know something about trigonometry. We need arctangent, we probably need tangent, maybe sine, cosine, maybe a relationship between those functions. The other thing we see that we know some lengths and some angles. So maybe we need to know some relationship that combine those things together. And there are a couple of things we know in geometry. One is called law of cosines that are called law of sines. We may need them, we may not need them. Let's see. Uh, the other thing that point us to law of sines maybe is the fact that we are asked to find the radius of a circle. And we know the law of sines relates sides and angles of inscribed triangle with the radius of circumscribed circle. So probably we need to know something about inscribed triangles maybe inscribed quadrilaterals, maybe inscribed angles, everything about inscribed things. And another thing that I see right away that we have sequence, so we have lines that intersect circle, line AB and line AD, and we know part of those lines, okay? So that makes me think about segments of sequence theory. Whatever we need to use to solve this problem, I'm going to introduce at the point when we need it. I'm going to give a short description of it. But also I want to point out that there are some other videos I have where I discuss those things in more details. So there are links to those videos in the description to this video. We are asked to calculate the area of the parallelogram. The area of parallelogram is the side AB times side AD times sine of angle A. So now we need to calculate the sine of this angle. We know this angle is arctangent of square root of 15. So what it means is that the tangent of this angle is square root of 15. Since the angle is given to us as arctangent, we need to know that arctangent changes from minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees, which means for the geometrical problem where we have only positive angles, the angle has to lie between 0 and 90 degrees. The other way to get the same result or get the same ratio of angle BAD is to notice, first of all, this is the angle in a parallelogram, so this angle is between 0 in 180 degrees, but also we need to notice that the tangent is positive for angles between 0 and 90 degrees, and tangent is negative for angles between 90 and 180 degrees. And since this tangent is positive, the angle has to be between 0 and 90 degrees. Now, if I know the tangent, I can find cosine using this formula. In this case, cosine will be 1 fourth. Now, notice that this formula gives us cosine squared. So when we take a square root to find cosine, it could be square root with plus sign or square root with minus sign. But again, since our angle is between 0 and 90 degrees, we need to know that in that range, all trigonometric functions are positive. So sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, they're all positive. So therefore, the answer is plus one fourth, not minus one fourth. Now to find sine out of cosine, we just need to remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and that formula gives us sine of that angle.
we can plug this value for sine in the formula for area. We get the formula like this. Now we do not know AB or AD yet. So that's something yet to be found. Let's remind ourselves segments of sequence theory. What segment of sequence theorem tells us is when we have two sequence, like AB here and AD, that intersect at point A, the product of the distances from point A to point E and point B is the same as the product of the distances from A to F and from A to D. And I have a video that discuss this and some other related facts to this in more details. And I highly recommend you to watch that video. So what's next? Well, the next thing, well, we see this point E here, point D here, it looks natural to connect them. Okay. And now if you look at quadrilateral D, E, B, C, we notice that this is a trapezoid because C, D is parallel to B. But this is not an ordinary trapezoid. It is inscribed trapezoid. But interesting property of the inscribed trapezoids that all inscribed trapezoids have to be isosceles, which means that side B, C equals to side D. Since uh, a, D, and B, C are congruent to each other since they're part of the parallelogram. A, D is also equals to D. So, and before we continue going through this problem, uh, for those of you who do not know that fact that inscribed trapezoid has to be isosceles, let's just talk about it a little bit. And when we have an arbitrary trapezoid, there is a certain relationship between the angles we have, like relationship between the angle A and angle B. Notice those two angles are what's called same side interior angles for parallel lines, which are bases AD and BC, and uh, same side interior angles for parallel lines should together give us 180 degrees. For the same reason, angle C and D together give us 180 degrees as well. But now, if it were just a trapezoid, we cannot say anything more about the angles. But this is an inscribed trapezoid. Okay? And we know that for any inscribed quadrilateral, sum of opposite angles should be 180 degrees. So angle B and angle D together should give us 180 degrees. Now, if I take the first statement and subtract the third statement from the first one, I'm going to get that angle A and angle D are congruent to each other. So the next step, what we want to do is to draw heights in trapezoid, height BE and height CF. They have the same length because BC and AD are parallel to each other. And the next thing to do is to look at this blue and green triangles. Those two triangles actually are congruent to each other. They're congruent by side in two angles. The sides are those red heights. Angles, this angle A is congruent to angle D. And angle E and angle F are 90 degrees, so they're also congruent to each other. And since uh, triangles are congruent, respective sides and angles should be congruent, and therefore AB should be the same as CD. So, and that completes the proof. So now let's go back to our problem. And the next thing we want to see here is that ADE is an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, there is a property for the altitude is the side bisector at the same time. The altitude DG splits the side AE in two halves, so AG equals GE. So the next thing we want to note is that we know the cosine of this angle A. It's one-fourth. And on the other hand, uh, the cosine can be obtained from this right triangle here, AGD as the ratio of adjacent leg 
to the hypotenuse, AG over AD. Now, AG is a half of AE, and the cosine is one quarter. So this is the relationship between AE and AD. If we can rewrite it in a different way, we get AD equals two AE, okay? And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna replace AD in this formula with this expression. If we do what we're gonna have, we're gonna have AE on the left, AE on the right, and they're gonna cancel out. As the result, we're gonna get that AB is two AF, and we know F, F is seven, so AB is 14. The next thing we need for this formula to work for the area is to find AD. Now, AD over here, we know this 2 AE. And AE we can find now because we know AB and we know B. Now we have all the information we need to find the area of parallelogram. And the area of parallelogram is going to be 28 square root of 50. All right. Now, the next question is to find the radius of the circle. To do that, let's first draw a diagonal of the parallelogram, BD. And now what we got here is BCD is the inscribed triangle. And we know how to relate the radius and the inscribed triangle via law of sines. So if you have a triangle with the side A, B, C, and angles alpha, beta, gamma, law of sine says if I take a side and divide it by sine of opposite angle, that ratio is the same for all sides in the triangle. And in addition, this ratio equals two times the radius of circumscribed circle. So essentially, what we can do here we can take a side, say BD, divide by sine of this angle C, and that ratio will be two times radius of the circle. We're gonna get there. Now we do know what sine is, it's this thing. We do not know what BD is, but that's the last thing we need to find. So now let's talk about BD. Although Law of sine doesn't tell us anything about BD. We have law of cosines that will help us find that BD. So law of cosines says the following. So if I know the side A, I know the side B, and I know the angle between them, I can calculate the length of side C using this formula. So for us, this formula will look like this. Notice that the right-hand side here is completely known to us. So if you plug all we have here, all the values here, we get 204. And that means that BD is square root of 204. Now we plug BD into this formula for radius, and we get our final answer is 4 times square root of 17 15.